I'm going to do my best to tell you how to handle the self-adjusting brakes on the 190SL. This also applies to all the other pontons of the 50s and the 60s and the rear brakes on the 230SL, which are almost identical to the 190SL. They are they're identical in design, but not uh, but not all the parts are interchangeable. But anyway, this is all the drum brake cars that have, have self-adjusting brakes. I'm going to try to give you the, my years of experience, and guess what? I'm not even going to try to sell you anything. This is just a, a tech video to help all the people out there that ask questions about the, the brakes. Now, the self-adjusting part is what confuses people. Uh, you don't have a little wheel like on a Volkswagen where you put your uh, screwdriver in there and you adjust a little wheel, or like on some American cars. What you've got are these self-adjusting or friction disc assemblies. Yeah, the self-adjusting assembly or the, the friction disc assembly because there's a friction disc inside here. Now, I'm not going to uh, adjust these because they're actually actually off of a car that I'm working on. I'm not going to do anything with these. But Oh, also, before I forget, if you're um, working on your, your car and your linings are, are still good but you need to do other brake work, do yourself a favor. Um, Clean off the um, brake dust and cover them with uh, tape to keep your greasy fingers uh, off of the um, the shoe lining. Um, so the friction disc uh, units, I've got uh, some fronts here. That, uh, these happen to be the, the left rear. I've got some fronts here that are for demonstration purposes. And the first thing you want to notice is these fronts. The shoes go opposite each other, as you can see, because you got uh, uh, two wheel cylinders on the front. And you see you got your um, friction disc assembly screwed in, in, in place, and your spring is on the back side. You'll notice it's on the front side on the rears. That's a big difference right there. Also, you got a difference in thickness because the shoes are thin. And so these are, are longer uh, assemblies on the um, front than on the rear. And what you have in order to make this work, got your, you have a spring, you have a washer, you have a friction disc, and that friction disc sits on this surface. Notice I cleaned off uh, the reliner, it, it's painted everything black, but I cleaned off. So you want metal, you want friction disc to metal uh, in contact. And no glue, go, uh, no grease or lubricant goes here. So I've seen people actually lubricate these things. That's not that defeats the per whole purpose. So once you've taken that off, you can see your friction disc material right here. And once you've taken that off, then the other side comes off. And so what you have is this friction disc, which is incredibly hard material, but it's very brittle. So you could snap it like a um, in half it very easily, but in compression, it's incredibly durable. So what happens is so when you're assembling these things that's how you're going to assemble it and what you're going to do is what I do is I you have to get everything centered up here because it's a very snug fit let me see not, not a snug fit it's a machine a precision fit so the the long sleeve goes into that washer. Now that this is assembled, and what I do in order to tighten these things is I'll put this side in a vise, and I've got a dedicated open-end wrench that I've ground down to, so I can get some clearance in terms of tightening these things to get a, a full turn on it. So I can get over here like this, and I come back over here. And I know that special tools have been made, or you can make one out of a socket and to do this, but this is quick and easy. Uh, and um, the, um, I'm trying to think what else I was going to mention about the friction discs. Well, there's so much to knowledge to impart and hard to remember all of it. Um, oh, yes. Uh, when you tighten these things down, there's no set uh, torque or anything like that. You just simply crank this down until it bottoms out. That's uh, that the, the distance here is all preset. The spring is preset. And uh, once that is done, once you've tightened this up to where everything is where this sleeve goes in and bottoms against uh, the threads here, that's it. And what that means is that you have enough tension on here that you cannot move this with uh, normal hand pressure. And I've seen people rig up um, fishing uh, scales to 
pull to check the tension on these things, that's not necessary. Uh, the only tension you have to worry about is the return spring. If this stays in position against the return spring, then you're, you're all set. And so what's happening is the you got this pin coming in from the back of the backing plate. You can see these are already in position. And what happens is the shoe sits on top of here. It rests like that. And in fact, you can you can tell which side which how these these shoes go because you put the rear shoes on a flat surface, they're going to line up like that. So this one goes on first. This goes on next. And of course, you got a big pin coming in here from the back. On the front, you've got a pin that goes in here and, and they pivot on uh, this pin right here this big big pivot bolt and the shoes are are setting on this pin right here which goes inside the self adjuster mechanism and you'll, you'll notice you got some slop right here you got a little little clearance and that clearance is the distance be, that the shoe is going to retract away from the drum so when you first put on the brakes the shoe will move out just a smidge and hit and be in contact with the brakes and then when you release the return springs pull the shoe back the clearance of this pin right here and that is your uh, shoe to drum clearance and what people don't realize is that uh, the this this clearance is important and the self-adjusting mechanism is what its job is to do to do is to hold the shoes in tight uh, in position where they are uh, up against this pin and they're not moving and then as you push on the brakes and wear down the shoe lining the pressure from you pushing on the brakes will advance the shoe against this friction material right here the friction disc and this, of course, takes place in very minute increments as you very slowly wear down the shoe lining material. And so these friction discs are not designed to have great movement. They're designed to, have to, to resist little teeny incremental movements, but not big movements. So if a person were to come in here, tighten everything down, and get the end, but the friction disc is not in the right position, and you want to use a, a big pry bar to, to squeegee, the shoes in position and you get on it and you really wrench on it and, and force the shoe to move a great distance you have a good chance of tearing this uh, friction disc splitting it and uh, that's one of the many ways in which they will fail sometimes they just break on their own and what you'll get is a, um, a shoe uh, that is fully retracted against the um, uh, self-adjuster here and then when you hit the brakes your, your pedal goes all the way to the floor as this shoe goes out about a half an inch and then your second pump is you'll have a firm pedal and that's because the shoe is already fully extended but then after you release the brakes the shoe goes back a half an inch and you have to and that's uh, one of the ways that these will uh, fail uh, and you, the biggest problem of course is if it's on the back side of the of the shoe you you can't see it back there so one of the uh, one of the downsides of this system the um, and then of course uh, setting up these shoes. Once you once you say tighten this, I use the vise and I'll tighten this up. Well, I don't know exactly where this is supposed to be relative to the the pin on the backing plate. And so what I'll do is I will uh, set this up a little snugly, put it, the shoes in in place, uh, uh, mount them dry for the first time, and get an idea of where the friction disc assembly is supposed to be relative to the pins and the reason I do that is because if you put the friction disc anywhere you want and then put them on the, the backing plate and then get everything lined up but but and then you start to screw this pin in from the back side and it doesn't line up and what you think you're going to do is I'm going to screw this in with a wrench and it's going to force this shoe the um, friction disc it's gonna, excuse, me, excuse me that's off camera here and what you think you're going to do is you're going to <clears throat> screw this pin, this uh, pin in place, and force the shoe and the friction disc to move and line up with this pin. And that's not going to work because the threads, if you want to call them that, are actually a, a combination of 
a, a stamped piece of metal. You can see, you can see the little rivets right there. Uh, and another stamped piece of metal right there, kind of riveted together and to make up pseudo threads. And, I, and, and what I mean by that is if you think you're going to tighten this thing with a wrench and, it, and it's not going in easily and you're going to try and align the friction disc to the pin, well, that's not what you're doing. What you're really doing is cross-threading it and ruining the threads. And there's not much here in terms of threads for you to go back in and re-thread with the die. So if you cannot screw this pin in by hand tight, then something's out of alignment and you need to find out what the problem is but because you cannot force that that pin to, to screw in there. And that's the true true for the front or the back. It's the same. They're different length pins um, for the front and rear, but they, they all have the same crappy pseudo threads to screw into. Uh, let's see. Retaining the um, shoes to the backing plate. Um, oh, another handy hint. Uh, if you want to check to make sure your shoes are going to fit inside your drum is to get the drum, line up the shoes, put them inside the drum and see if uh, if this if you can get a, if these holes right here will line up. And uh, then and, uh, inside the drum, uh, because sometimes people will reline these and get the lining too thick, and you'll find out that you cannot. Uh, one of the worst things to do is to have all this assembled and then try to get your drum in place and find out that you can't because the, the uh, lining is too thick. But all the um, <clears throat> all all the shoes are held in place by a pin. Different length pins for front and rear, as you can imagine. And in the rear, the pin has a wave washer that goes right here in a, in a flat washer, and then you compress it, and then you put a cotter pin on the back in the holes right here, and that's what holds the shoe against the backing plate. On the front, you have a spring, a uh, short little spring. I'll show you on the uh, uh, car I've got over here, and again with a uh, cotter pin. And what you're going to find is that you can see how very little material is uh right here and what happens is that that will stretch or will break and so don't uh, so be sure to check that for elongation um, and you can this is just a all this is is a nail if you can't find it from Mercedes just make one out of a nail uh, let's see let's go over real quick to the car over here and I'll show you this is the front and you can see the the springs I was telling you about that's how they do it on the front and if you don't have these uh, everything assembled correctly these these springs will actually hit the inside of the drum and right in here now the uh, end result that you want to achieve is that when you have your return springs attached and everything lined up properly the friction disc will not move against the tension of the uh, return springs and you've got your clearance between the, the this pin holding everything in place and you've got your pin coming in from the back going into the friction disc assembly and you had have, have this small amount of clearance which is your shoe to drum clearance and the way you test that is you just that's it that's the clearance that you want Those are properly adjusted shoes, and they're all ready to go. And when I say properly adjusted, well, they're installed so that they will, so the drum will go in place, and the, the uh, shoe, the drum clearance is correct. <clears throat> Another thing that, to mention is the um, Mercedes realizes things, things are going to stick on here, so you've got three. 8 by 125 threaded holes uh, and those are designed to, to screw a bolt in there about uh, two inches long screwed in there and what it does is it will force the drum off of the hub be sure to uh, clean these out uh, so that you don't screw a, a bolt into the, the uh, dirty threads and, and cross thread or mess up the threads inside the drum but that's um, that's how you get the drum off when they're stuck. The fronts are, are pretty bad about getting things stuck. The rears 
are going to be rusted in place. Also, uh, another thing to mention, uh, as you can imagine, these things, as they, as they pivot and arc outwards, they're not on a true round circle. They're on a, um, a slight arc that is uh, it, it's offset sort of slightly. So that what that means is you're going to have offset contact between the shoe and the drum. Uh, for instance, you won't get any contact down here at all. You get all your contact up here. And so what I suggest people do is when you, once you've done your um, uh, brakes, stomp on the brakes a few times, or you actually you can even do you can do this while you're um, um, while you've got the car up on the jack stand. So rotate your drum and see where your contact is, and and then come back in here and start sanding uh, the high spots off to where you get more and more contact. Uh, while we're at the on the subject. I don't like ribbed shoes, but that's what this car has, and um, I prefer bonded shoes, but that's what this car came with. So, um, also, if you have good lining material, but it's dirty, uh, get some uh, 50 grit sandpaper like you use for sanding uh, wood floors, and uh, just sand the um, the surface and get the glaze off of there. Uh, let's see another handy hint on the front. You've got the big pivot pin and a lock tab and if you don't do this in the correct manner uh, the drum will hit right here so be sure to lock these down correctly uh, so that you don't have them grinding on the drum but if you hear that you'll know exactly what the problem is let's see if there's anything else i can mention in terms of doing brakes Uh, let's see, make sure you're, you got good, um, smooth holes in here for the pin to pivot on. This is the one place you can put some, uh, lube if you want to. Uh, these are notorious for the aluminum, uh, oxidizing against the steel pin. Uh, you've got, um, you can also do some lubricant on, on here. Uh, you do not need any lube or anything on here. You just want metal to, to friction disc contact at that point. Let's see. The fronts, uh, the fronts are a lot easier if you remove the uh, hub. It's a lot easier to work on them on the on the fronts if you remove the hub, and that's that's a good opportunity to go in and, and uh, check your wheel bearings and uh, replace your wheel bearings and your seal, but uh, and check the clearance. You've got a little three-cornered um, washer in here. What you want to do is snug down the um, clamp to the point where you can, this is smooth to turn, and you can put just a little bit of pressure on that three-cornered uh, washer and move it, and that's your, uh, that's your clearance. And it's a lot easier to work on these when um, this hub is off. I don't think there's anything else. I'm trying to think what else have I missed I don't know I guess that's uh, that's it I, I look forward to comments if anybody's bothered to watch this far um, and if, if anyone has any other ideas um, about doing brakes but uh, this is from my actual practical experience doing brakes so hope this helps